Okay, here we are with our next group of uh, graminoids. We're going to do the Juncaceae, and the Juncaceae has uh, two genera, Juncus and Lusula. And the Juncaceae as a graminoid, you now we could go through all these features of a Juncaceae with its leaves and basal leaves and features and perianth parts and numbers of those parts compared to grasses with lemmas, paleas, glooms, and all these other features. But the simplest way, um, I think, to do this is you have a typical juncus that's a graminoid, and, and it does have six parts, so it's a monocot, parts in three. You just look into the inflorescence and you look and you go, oh, there's these triangular capsules that look like an iris capsule. And they're on there most of the year. So the easiest way to tell a juncus is looks like a graminoid, a grass-like thing. And you look inside the cluster of flowers and you go, Oh my, I have a little tiny iris capsule, it's triangular, three-sided, and if, but if it was round, I'd have a lusula. That's the genus lusula. Now some of them are natural uh, disturbance species. They like disturbances, uh, like the path rush, uh, tenuous, buffonius is another. They, they like disturbance, but they're, they're natural disturbance species. They're not invasives, but they are disturbance species. And so we're going to do, to go with our keys, a very simple arrangement that if you use a standard botanical key, you're going to run into the same leads. And and so we're going to walk down through the key. I won't give you species because you know, these, these videos are sort of intended to be national, but they will match when you download your key for your area, the species that are going to be in the key. So if we go in here, I have a stick key that's in here and it's very simple to use. And we'll go through the features as I go down through. And as usual, I get you to a, a group. And I'll get you to a group of juncuses. And then you go into the field guide, into that group, and you look and you just match to the one you're holding because we're doing the most common, the most frequently encountered. And I don't key them down to the species level, but most of them are distinct enough from a photo you could match. But we're going to get you to the group by King. So the first one, and it's a very easy juncus to identify, so you would look and you go, oh, I have, oh, I have iris capsules in a graminoid looking plant, so I have a juncus. So we have these terminal. Notice they, they're at the summit of the plant. We have terminal inflorescence at the tips. Well, we have another group of juncuses that have several very common ones in here that the inflorescence is on the side. These are all on the side of the stem. So they're on the side. They're not at the tip, they're on the side. So the next question in the key is whether you have a, ter a, a lateral inflorescence or a terminal. And when you get to the lateral, there's a, there's a few of them, but you don't have to key any further. You go to the lateral ones, and a very common one that's everywhere nationally is the fusus and and you would go into the key into the lateral group and look and you'll probably see a fusus and maybe one or two other ones and you're done 
um, and you got the lateral inflorescence ones. Then you get down the key again. So here we are. We go in. Do we have terminal or lateral? The next question is, it'll ask, are the inflorescences two-thirds or more of the plant? In other words, in Buffonius, these inflorescence clusters are going down. And so two-thirds of the plant is a whole series of inflorescences that make up the plant stature. And that's Buffonius. And Buffonius is a small st species, six inches at most, typically four or five inches. It's highly branched with a lot of, of these clusters of um, inflorescences on it. So that's the first break in the Juncus key, a very easy one. And I think that's the toad rush. And that one's one of the natural Invas not invasive, but disturbing species. You find it along pathways where maybe vehicles is driven down through a trail or in the woods or where people walk a lot. You tend to find that one. And you find it all over the country. I see it everywhere I go. So it's a very common one. And now the next question is going to be on the leaves. Are, and you, t you have to take your finger. So the leaves of many juncas have little divisions in them, little partitions called septate nodos is a botanical term, but you take your finger and you pull it, you slightly squeeze and pull it up the stem and you can fill those partitions and that'll take you to one group. So I have a group of terminal with little partitions cross sections, little cross walls inside uh, that group. And then I have another group of juncuses that don't have that cross partition. So when I get to the group that has no cross partitions, I, that's a separate group. So I go into the key and I look and, I, and I'll be given three, four choices. And you get a lot of those are these big uh, knotted head topped ones that lack the partitions and then when i get into the ones with a partition it'll ask the last remaining question for those with the partition do the seeds have tails on them and what you got to do is the infamous graminoid crunch as we call it you take and you crunch up the whole inflorescence, and the seeds are tiny. They're little tiny specks, and you just keep working with your fingers, and they fall out into your hand. You take your hand lens, and there's a whole bunch of seeds in my hand, and there's no tails. And the tails look like a um, long elliptic seed with two little tips sticking out. They're very obvious. They're called tails. And so you would key down and you go, this one, I have cross partitions, terminal cross partitions and no seeds. I mean, no tails on seeds. So that's one group. And the other group that I've keyed to, terminal cross partitions with tails. And I just go into the field guide and I go into those groups and we also put the names of them into the key. So you just look them up and you go there and you match them to the photo. And again, we're doing the most common junctuses. So let's review because there's not much more to this. And also, again, let me remind you, if you go to your local flora, and you start the key, you're going to be asked the same question. So it's not like uh, this is some invented methodology. This is just a overview synopsis of the major breaks. And we put you into little clusters of groups of species uh, of the most common. And we give you a photograph to match to it. So let's review. So, because this is easy enough, there's not much to these. 
first thing it asks me, do I have lateral inflorescence because the stem continues up, lateral, or do I have terminal where the inflorescence at the tip? And if I have lateral, you're going to be given several species and you're done. You look those up and you select the one you have. Um, then when I have terminal, the next question is, do I have a lot of inflorescence taking up over half of the plant? Two-thirds almost of the plant is in inflorescence, and they're small, and that's buffonius. Then I move on. I get down. I have terminal, but I don't have inflorescences. They're just all at the tips. I take the leaves. I run my fingers down them, and I go, oh, I feel, I feel cross partitions. So I either have cross partitions or not. And if I don't have any cross partitions, I go to that group. We give you the list of names. Go and you match it to a photograph. Remember, we're only giving you the most common ones. And we run that from algorithms from plant distributions for your region. And then you go, okay, I have cross partitions because I can fill them going across. And I go to that. And then I... I have to take the inflorescence to quote unquote the graminoid crunch until I get a whole bunch of the tiny little seeds out. And all I have to do is look, there are seeds in my palm. None of these have little tails or appendages sticking out the end. And I'm either in the appendage group or non appendage. I get my list of names. I go into the field guide and I match it. And those are the junk casey. Um, many of these, several of these species are common across the whole U.S., including all the way up into Alaska. Uh, other ones are the same species that respond to disturbances across the country, like tenuous, the path rush, buffonius, the toad rush. Um, you see them everywhere you go. Um, others are more regionalized, but in big regions. And um, overall, for delineation purposes, you see the same couple of rushes all the time. And I think if you could just quickly go down through this very simple key, uh, it won't take you long to learn your rushes that you need for delineation purposes.